What is up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Ford and another What the Truck video. We have this awesome 78 F350 that is my buddy Matt's and uh, Matt, what the truck dude? It's a farm truck. We're on a farm. That's right, that's right. Um, so, uh, dude, this thing is super cool. We've spoke about it, I think we spoke about it at the Grand Nats video. Yeah. But uh, for whoever might not have seen it, yeah. let's give them like the full rundown on why this truck is so awesome why you have it, everything you've done to it, and kind of the story behind it. Okay. Um, well, in a nutshell, this was my grandfather's truck. I grew up in this thing. Um, so it's a 78 F350. It started out as a short bed, short cab F100. And growing up with him, it was a work truck. We. Um, if we were doing anything on the weekend, we'd get it out and, you know, there was a nice car that stayed in the garage, but this truck is, is what we did, what we did fun stuff in. So, what are some of, like, one, some of your earliest memories in it? Oh, I remember one of my, one of my more fond memories with him and this truck is we're in East Tennessee. My uncle at the time, he lived in Statesville, North Carolina. And... I remember we went over there for a visit and I, I remember loading this truck down and then in, in between the, the two front seating areas we had my bag and then my pillow and I know I had a disc man with me and all the extra stuff and I remember thinking there's no way this truck is going to make it to, to North Carolina <laughs> and um, it started out it had a straight six and a C6 in it originally and I'll elaborate on what's in it now later but so we get off down the interstate and we get right around state line for Tennessee and North Carolina. We'd gotten off for something. I'm sure I made him pull off the road for something, but we get back on. And since there's so much stuff in between the seats, I couldn't see the pedals. And he starts, he starts pedaling it. And I remember thinking, oh gosh, we're gonna be stuck and we're never gonna get home, ever. <laughs> uh, and his laugh uh, at that, I, I... How old do you think you were? I was probably 10, <laughs> yeah. That is awesome. Yeah, uh, but I remember, you know, if we needed to go get mulch, we were doing it in this truck. I remember he had the truck painted. The truck was painted twice. It was painted in '91, and then it was painted just a scratch and spray job a few years later after that. But I remember one of those times he had it painted. He picked it up. He came and picked me up from mom and dad's, and we went down to the rock quarry. And we put moving blankets on the side, but we loaded the bed down with gravel. And um, it was just, it was always, it was always a truck. How, um, how did you end up with it? Well, so it stayed in his barn. Um, as he got older, he didn't drive it much. And then he eventually passed away. I didn't even think about it, but when my wife and I got married, we got married at his place. And before I got the truck, the truck was in the barn at our wedding as a backdrop. Really? And it was never planned. And I didn't figure that out until I was looking through pictures later on. So this is this has always been with me for my entire life. Uh, after he passed, it sat in his barn for five, six years. I finally brought it back to my place and I put it in the barn and it was a cool truck. Uh, it was starting to show some age on the back though. The bed, inside the bed was beat up and outside the bed was rusting and everything from the B pillar forward was great, but everything behind that was kind of wore out. It was a work truck. I still, I'm a hot rod guy, and, and so I lowered it and changed the wheels and did a cool interior in it. It was white with a red interior. and You know a good interior guy? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I kept it like that for just a few months, and I, I came to figure out that I, I didn't like the truck in that kind of configuration. And that was, it was a short bed, just short beat up. Short bed, short cab, um, just about like, it's actually full circle from where I started with, with the green shop truck. Really? But I didn't like this truck like that, because I couldn't fill the back with mulch if we needed to, or yeah. you know, go pick up a load of lumber. So I started thinking in my head, I'm never gonna get rid of this truck. That being said, what do I do with it? Because I've got pretty stuff. I don't need something pretty that's going to sit in the garage. Um, I, need a, I need a truck truck. So I looked for about a year and found a running driving one-ton truck. 
I swapped the straight six with the C6 and all of his front sheet metal onto this 161 inch wheelbase 77 chassis. Okay. Um, with a factory 12 foot flatbed. Kept it like that for about a year. I noticed that winter I kept it in the barn and I couldn't get it out because it was too muddy. I tried pulling it out a couple times and the last time I tried getting it out, it got stuck and I had to push it back in with the four wheeler. So I just kind of washed my hands of it, let it sit there for a few months, the rest of the winter. Springtime came, I pulled it out. I thought, I did some measuring and I figured out, well, if I, if I take the 12 foot bed off and I cut the frame right behind the shackle hangers and build a new bed for it, then I can fit it in the garage at the house and I'll have like an inch and a half in the front and an inch and a half in the rear. <laughs> so cool, we'll do that. Pulled the old bed off. Well, the bed's off. I guess it's time to scratch it and spray it again. So it already had a beautiful red interior in it. It was Wimbledon white. I stripped it down to bare metal and found a guy to spray it. And then, well, if we're gonna spray it, do I go back red and white? Cause I never really loved it. I, green is my color. If it's green, we're, we're right. Heck yeah. So I knew I wanted this green on the truck and I, we did some spray outs. And I remember, I, I don't know how many nights I've pestered my wife. What do you think of this? And what do you think of that? So we finally settled on this limestone green metallic and Wimbledon white and shot it and built the, uh, built the flatbed, had my local uh, metal supermarkets. I drew everything up. I said, I want it cut like this and bent like this. And you know, I put it together like Legos. And so then we got a bed, painted cabs on. Uh, my wife actually did all the cut and buff when it was originally painted. Really? That's cool. Um, I love yeah. the 22s. So it stayed like that with a straight six for a summer. But did you, did you have the truck this was interior done, in it, it was, at the time? Pardon? Did you put this interior in it then? Or? I did. I did. Okay. So we went ahead and went all green on the inside. Did uh, did a cool leather seat. And for those who don't um, know, what's your day job? So I own Morgan's Auto Trim. We are a full service custom hot rod, street rod interior shop. We're now starting to get into the market of production, but custom F100, F series Super Duty, or F series uh, interiors. So Can we have seats out right now, door panels are in the works, dash pads, you know, everything. Tell me a little about your interior, what all you did on this. So it's a factory frame. We started with that, stripped it down, built a plywood base for it, hand sculpted all the foam. It's got, uh, this truck has relicate leather in it. I love it. Uh, covered the dash pad to match. The original door panels, I sprayed them brown and they've been like that for five years. So I'll Looks build door good. panels for it eventually, but. Put the RTX gauges in it from Dakota. Yeah. Pretty much the best gauges. So it stayed like, like what you see. Ooh, I didn't realize you got Chuck's uh, oh, yeah. fillet pieces. Yeah, Shout all out. of them, all of them. Shout out to Meeks. I know, Chuck, I need the, I need the heat and AC controls. Come on, oh, man. I did, I saw he just came out with those. <laughs> he just made those. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh yeah, he even got the cigarette lighter, yeah. So um, that pedal tells me the straight six might not be in there anymore. Yeah. So it stayed about like what you see for a year. Really enjoyed it, got it out. Um, just hearing people's stories and, and seeing people smile about it. So much fun. I wanted to drive it more, but a straight six with a C6 and a one ton truck, you're 52, 53 miles an hour. Um, anywhere I go, I've got to get it on the interstate or the highway. So I start going through the steps in my head. So let's, let's repower it. I knew I wanted about 400 horsepower. I wanted modern OBD2 diagnostics. I've tried aftermarket EFI and it's not for me. Um, and then I knew I wanted um, an overdrive automatic transmission. So I weighed everything out, all options. And I wound up having some friends at a, uh, at a local salvage yard kind of get me started on the Coyote route. So we did a we did a Gen 2 truck motor in it originally. Put a blower on it. Had some complications with that. Uh, so 
we wound up putting a different motor in. So now it's a Gen 2 headed, Gen 3 short block, ARP hardware, boundary oil pump gears, all the, all the fun stuff. It looks Edelbrock so supercharger. Tidy under here. Um, you did such a good job. It's, I wanted it to be serviceable 10, 20 years down the road. If I have an issue, if I have a, a fuel line that starts to leak or a hydraulic line on the brake system or steering system that has a problem, I wanted it serviceable. To me, it's not a show truck. It cleans up very well, but it had to be serviceable. So there's some things that are exposed that otherwise could be hidden, but it's a very driver friendly truck. Um, wound up having the wheels built for it by um, JK Wheels out of California. Had all terrains on it and figured out quick that all terrains and a supercharged Coyote are not a good combo. Not, not a good combo. I figured out all terrains um, and an NA Godzilla are not a good combo yeah, either. Did, didn't you? Yeah. Um, so we went with the big wheels. It's got uh, air lift, air ride on it. The front's fully um, on air ride coil replacement and the rear still on leaf springs but it has helper bags on it now okay and that's strictly for ride quality um i, I don't do you have any more plans for this in the future i do not okay so just it, it was it was pretty unchanged for the last eight or nine months okay and i finally got my trailer hitch built for it and i got my brake controller put in it and we moved hay with it earlier this year uh, we did 22 rolls at once and that was that was my vision when I started this truck was a cool farm truck that I never have to get rid of. Now it snowballed real bad but yeah it still gets used as a truck. Right. I mean honestly you could see in the bed how scratched up the wood is. Let's see guys. Yeah. So you could little I mean you could see it gets used. The floors are covered in hay. You know we tried cleaning it up a little bit but you could see I mean it's he uses it. That's the whole point, is you got to use the trucks. At the end of the day, if you don't, what's the point of having it? Right. How big a fuel cell did he, are you running? So that was one of the debacles I ran into, putting a half ton late model, or I say late model, half ton 78 uh, cab onto a one ton truck. All the one ton uh, cabin chassis trucks had an end cab fuel tank. Yep. I didn't want to cut a hole in the cab. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. So what do I do? Well, the rails are narrow. Do I try to fit a tank in between the rails still? No, so I, I cruised on, um, I want to say Craigslist. It was it was probably Craigslist. And found a, uh, a 49 gallon RV tank. Um, so ran the saddle tank on this side. It's got a big toolbox on the other side that holds two Vi air compressors and a five gallon tank. and all the controls for the air ride. It's got some cleaning stuff in it. and I love this thing. This is just a perfect example of what a clean truck looks like. You don't have to go crazy. I mean, obviously it's, you know, you got a really nice motor and everything in there, but it's not crazy. It's not over the top. You know, you didn't spend $100,000 building a truck you can't use. Right, yep. Oh heck, I didn't realize you got the Elite Machine Shout out. Yes. Dude, those things are so cool. I have a set of those for Snickers. If I ever get that truck back. Man. It's so slick. Well, I think that it's time that I bust out the drone. I'm going to get you guys some cool drone shots. And then uh, we go for a ride maybe? Yeah. Heck yeah. 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 All right, guys. So I didn't realize that the drone didn't work. But we're going to go take this thing out for a rip. We're going to go drive it around a little bit. We're going to have some fun.
traffic's pretty clear. Yeah. <laughs> this thing sounds good loaded up. Yeah, it's got a really nice exhaust note to it. It's not too loud, it's not usual coyote stuff. What kind of exhaust are you running? It's got a 24 inch Magna Flow dual in, dual out H pipe muffler. Thank you. And then it has two 20 inch vibrant resonators. Oh wow. After that. It's all TIG welded stainless. Oh, this is beautiful. This truck is awesome as you guys just saw. I love this thing. And uh, if you guys can, make sure to go follow Morgan's Auto Trim on Instagram. And then, uh, got anything you want to tell everybody? No. No. That's pretty much it, huh? That's it. That's it. That's it in a nutshell. What do you guys think of this thing? Let us know in the comment section below. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button. Give us a follow. Give us a like. And we'll see you in the next video.